Ian! Yep! What's up? Well, for one, what the f are you doing under there? Well, to understand the answer to that question, you have to become one with the car. I'll pretend I know what you mean. Excellent. We've got an intro to film. Okay, um, absolutely nothing to do with Morgans in this one, I don't think. Uh, no. I'll save that for another one. Um, I wrote everything down on a sticky note. That's on my desk. Okay. If we cut hair, you can bring it back to me. Was it this one? Nah, that's the one. You could have done this yourself, but you had the list. Yeah, I could. Um, so we're going in the engine building bay. We're running an engine up on the test bed. We've got a Rover SD1 in that we've done quite a lot of extensive work on. A Rover P5 that's had a lot of work on it as well. And a Land Rover 110 that we've installed a, a really, really nice driving engine into. Can, can I, I couldn't yet? tell you were reading that off a script. Yeah, can I get out yet? No. I hate it when you come up with these ideas. And yet, here you are. Okay, so we've got this engine on test bed. Uh, specifications of the engine are 4.6 bottom end. Stage 3 cylinder heads, Piper 270 camshaft, full RPI ignition kit, and Edelbrock carburetor. Um, we've built the engine up as a full turnkey engine. The customer is in America. Um, he wants to extract his engine and put this one in. Doesn't want to change over any of the covers over, etc. So um, that's obviously uh, great for us. It means we can run the engine up on the test cell, uh, get the ignition timing set, do the base settings on the carburetor, which we've already jetted. Well, in fact, you've already jetted, Steve, for a 4.6. So um, we'll just fire it up. And uh... so we've got a really lovely tick over speed, about 800 RPM. The engine's nice and smooth throughout the whole rev range. And I know, and you know, and he knows that four sixes work really nicely in one tens. They do. Which lead us to. Come on, you know. I was just going to let the like, camera change and then oh, okay. the 110 suddenly, but yeah. that doesn't work anymore, does it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so here we are then, out in the 110, same engine platform as we've really just seen in the uh, engine test bed. It's 4.6, stage 3 heads, Piper 270 camshaft. The only difference here is this is fuel injected, gives us that little bit more refinement, uh, a little bit more potential of fuel efficiency. Um, but in terms of the engine's overall power, it's pulling, you know, um, strength, it's, it's going to be the same because the amount of air flowing through the engine is the same. Drives really, really nicely. Um, pulls through the gear as well. We'll show that in a, in a, in a moment. Um, and also, did you know, it's pretty much an automatic. Pretty much an automatic? Yeah, this thing here. Yeah. You don't actually need that. Just choose one and go, yeah? Yep. By choose one, I mean choose fifth. So as I was saying, automatic. Still in fifth, as still, we always are. Still in fifth. I mean, we're in a 30, but I was kind of hoping it just turned into a 20. Well, you can still do 20. That's a fair point, that is. <laughs> yeah, There's nothing you saying you have to do the speed limit, is there? There's not. Well, there you go, then. There's 20. That's still in fifth. It is. No trouble at all. Well, there you go then. There's something under 15. And there's still no trouble at all. So like I said, automatic. You move Perfect. this thing, go forward and backwards, that's all you need to do. You need to find somewhere to abandon you, don't I? I don't know, do you? Yeah, apparently. It's what we I'd, do. I'd rather you pick me up afterwards. Rather well, than okay. Yeah. Let's do that next then. Hello. 
Hello. Hang on, it's a long way up. It's also a long way down if you get out. That is. Or get pushed. Funny how that works. They all got a bit noisy. Ah, there's a doodah that moves a widget and gases escape. Ah, I hate when that happens. Ah, can be fun. So, um, get up and go. This certainly has it. For a big heavy car on 33 inch tyres, you don't need to worry about keeping up with modern traffic. You don't even need to use the full extent of the rev range. This engine just pulls and pulls. Under the bonnet then, it's business as usual. Um, we've seen lots of these with fuel injected engines in. Came in as a 3.9 fuel injected vehicle. Uh, the injection system, the ancillaries have all been removed from that engine and uh, completely cleaned down, as you can see, done in our normal kind of paint scheme. Um, 3.9 emblem that's normally cast into there has been ground out in the 4.6 stainless badge has been put in. And uh, as we've already said, the engine specs, 4.6 stage 3 heads, 270 camshaft, all planted underneath the original kind of outfit. Our ignition upgrades on top, uh, the power amp sat over there on the heater matrix and um, obviously a remapped ECU. So, I think that finishes this one. Just about. I've got no idea at all what you're going to edit to, so uh, we'll, we'll find out now. Yeah. Okay, this SD1 uh, has come into us as a 2.6 model, straight six twin carb, and is leaving us as a 3.5 EFI model. We've done a feature video on this, uh, which will be published after this uh, engine workshop update. Uh, at some point and we've also done quite a few photos of this so if you follow us on Facebook there's already an album so lots of you'll probably know what's going on here. Holly has built up a 3.5 litre engine with stage 3 cylinder heads, Piper 270 camshaft, SD1 front end, hot wire fuel injection system and then once it was installed built a full 304 grade stainless steel exhaust system. The engine's coupled to a three-speed auto uh, that's been fully rebuilt as well. Steve's then come in and plumbed everything up wired in the injection system. The ECU is located, located in the passenger footwell, the same as it would be um, on a fuel injected model SD1. So we're not quite at road testing yet, so we'll save that for the feature video rather than putting it into the workshop update video. However, um, although we're not quite set up on the injection system and things yet, if the customer's immobilizer lets me, we should be able to fire it up. So we've just got engine set up to complete, uh, as you can hear it's not quite happy to throttle up initially straight away at the moment but we're not timed or anything at, uh, at present. Um, we've got throttle cable and a kick down cable for the gearbox to connect and then we'll be ready for road testing. Um, but that concludes the uh, SD1 at present, but if you want to see more of the uh, conversion, um, obviously there's a photo album on Facebook and there'll be a feature video soon. P5 then. And that's a bonnet spring. Sure is, very meaningful. So, it came into us as a non-runner. Um, from what I remember when we stripped the engine down, lots of fuel in the sump was a comment from Luke who stripped the engine down. Uh, anyhow, uh, under here, obviously um, fully remanufactured engine. Um, we have uh, obviously ARP'd the bottom end. We've used a Kent H180 camshaft and stage one cylinder heads just to try and promote that little bit extra bottom end grunt. Customer wanted to stay obviously original 3.5 and, and do things to original specification here. So we've applied a lot of uh, original coloring to the intake manifold and rocker covers, um, the elbows, SU elbows. The SU carburetors have been gone through. And what I mean by that is we've applied um, the rebuild kits that are available for them, new needles and jets as well. Um, obviously they are old, still old bodies, old pistons. Uh, in fact, I think we had this one where it did just lock in the dash pot once. Um, when we first fired the engine up, we just had to uh, fettle things there so it runs nice and smooth, which it does now. Um, so behind that, the original three-speed gearbox has been removed has been uh, rebuilt along with the torque converter being rebuilt and then reinstalled. Um, 
Ignition upgrades have been applied. We've obviously gone for black Magna Core leads just so things look more original under the bonnet, but we always use Magna Cores and that's why it's got them. Um, Bosch 12 volt coil and the RPI amplifier. So it's moved away from its original single points distributor. Um, although this had already moved away from that anyway, the customer had already uh, installed an electronic distributor, which we've reused here with our amplifier because it's the same distributor that we use ourselves. Um, so um, yeah, everything else sort of been done to try and keep things as original possible as possible. Lots of P5 owners out there probably know these have a bit of a uh, overheating issue in on particularly hot summer days, which we have had just previous to filming this. Um, we think that's probably why the SD1 engine's got a smaller pulley on the water pump, just to promote a bit more flow at tick over. Um, so we have installed some electric fans on here. Um, as inconspicuously as we can and they're just set to come in just if you're sat in traffic um, or sat in a queue somewhere um, just to, to make sure we've got adequate airflow through the radiator because a bit of extra airflow through the radiator it just keeps that temperature absolutely spot on in the middle um, and that's doing that they're doing their job really really nicely um, when called upon they're not on all the time which is great so uh, I think that just leaves us to go for a road test um, and uh, for me to dump you somewhere in a hedge. That's how it normally Preferably works, alive. isn't it? A lot, well, you know, the boot's big enough, we could probably fit you in it. Let's not try that, though. No, let's not. Out in the P5, then, um, everything as is exactly as expected and anticipated. Um, Three-speed gearbox working lovely. Obviously it always feels like it needs that overdrive, but um, it's original, so it, it, it's as it was intended. Um, the 3.5 engine is doing everything I ask of it. You know, I just gently apply the accelerator pedal, I gently accelerate, and if I want to get up and go, it will do that as well. Obviously it's only a 3.5, but those um, upgrades that we discussed earlier on, the cam and the heads, really have just added to that bottom end uh, go. Um, obviously it's a marginal upgrade, you know, a fine one, but you, you can really tell that it's a well-balanced engine um, producing some nice smooth power. Um, and, you know, the carburetors, they're supplying the right air-fuel ratio to the engine. It's not dulling down when I go to accelerate, i.e. over-fueling or under-fueling. Um, it's just responding nicely. So, yeah, really, really nice place to be lovely car to drive and uh, a very well turned out Rover V8 engine. So um, you know how I've got a favourite classic car? The MGB GT. Yeah, I think it might have been pipped. This is just such a nice place to sit such a casual lovely smooth drive i think this might be on par with the bgt for me now um, i think it depends on what i would want it for though obviously very different cars in terms of driving style this is very sedate nice lovely smooth um, which an mgb can be too but they've obviously got that sportier look to them and uh would generally lend themselves to a manual gearbox and um, a little bit more of a sportier driving stance, I guess. But I didn't expect me to uh, pop this on my list. It sounds like it's there now. It definitely is. In the engine building bay then, um, three fresh engines that Holly's uh, working on slash almost finished. This engine here is being built up for a Defender 90 that's coming over from the Netherlands for a, a V8 conversion from diesel, heading over to us at the beginning of the new year. Uh, the base engine that Holly's built up here is a 4.6 engine, GEMS front end, it's going with GEMS engine management system. We've got a Piper 270 camshaft in there and it's going to be using our stage three cylinder head. So the stage three 4.6 platform with 270 camshaft is a very common build for us now for the four before world. Um, you've seen it in quite a lot of our workshop update videos. So uh, this customer is going for that same platform. It's tried and tested, works really well. This engine here, 
vastly different from a lot of our engine builds because it's painted. Uh, this is going to the Falkland Islands. Uh, this is building built up as a 4.6 stage one engine and the customer asked for it to be painted red, I believe. Hopefully. Um, yeah, his build spec says red, thankfully. Um, so the block's painted, the heads are now being painted um, and that's being built up with Piper 270 camshaft as well. Stage one heads um, and we'll be going out with the Edelbrock carburetor installed and our RPI ignition system. His original engine is on its way to us so that all the covers and ancillaries can be changed over so he'll get more of a drop-in uh, turnkey engine by using his parts. This engine here is again a 4.6 engine built with stage three cylinder heads and if memory serves me correctly the 270 camshaft but I'm just going to double check the build spec. Yep, 270 camshaft. So being built up as a full turnkey engine, we've supplied everything you see here. Going into a range of a classic again uh, in the USA. Um, so it's having the Bosch 4.6 airflow meter. It's got Bosch four hole injectors, Tornado ECU chip. And this will be fired up on our engine test bed shortly. We're just prepping the engine wiring loom, adding in Lambda sensors to it because the V-belt wiring loom, which will make this more plug and play for the customer in the States, um, doesn't have Lambda sensors normally. It's an addition that we're putting on for the customer. Um, you won't see this running in the test bed on this video because we're really trying to um, actually publish a video because it's been a while since we've done one. Um, so the engine test bed running of this engine will be in our next workshop update whenever that may be. Um, however, Range Rover Classic, Range Rover Classic engines, um, let's go to another Range Rover Classic. So from Classic Range Rover engines to Classic Range Rovers. Um, this, many of you followed us for a while, will have seen via our Facebook page, um, is a Range Rover that we started doing quite an extensive rebuild on several years back. Um, we then shelved the project because of how busy we were, etc. Um, however, about a month ago, we had a customer come over who was interested in it, and they've now commissioned us to finish it for them. Uh, so we've got a couple of uh, additions to put on for his specification, a couple of bits to change, uh, interiors going leather rather than cloth, that sort of thing. But at the beginning of next year, we will be turning our attention to this to actually complete the project, which is a really good feeling. So with that, um, I think that's the end of this workshop update. Not quite. What was that? We're going to do something you said we weren't going to do. Oh, OK. Sounds like you know better than me. And this is the bit we weren't going to do. One engine running on the test bed then. Steve's been through and done a full setup on the injection system. Ignition timing's been set. We've also plugged the laptop in, make sure that all the sensors are reading correct to the ECU and that the lambda sensors are reading correctly. So uh, just got to pack it up and send it to America.